This is the lecture entitled English Gothic 2. In this section, we'll take a look at <clears throat> three phases of Gloucester Cathedral in Gloucestershire, Western England, <clears throat> and then the Southern Minster, south of Lincoln, Bristol Cathedral uh, in Southern England near Bath, and uh, Tewkesbury Abbey. And uh, I think it's in. Uh, uh, just west of Oxford Char. So this is uh, Gloucester Cathedral, uh, a cathedral made famous by Harry Potter. Uh, scenes were filmed in the cloister at Gloucester Cathedral in the Harry Potter movies. It's a perpendicular style uh, exterior with a perpendicular style window from the late uh, Gothic. Uh, the nave is the original uh, Norman nave. It was a Benedictine church. It was made a cathedral by uh, Henry VIII when he converted the uh, <clears throat> Roman Catholic cathedrals to Anglican cathedrals. Uh, so the nave, uh, the uh, elevations were designed by Benedictine monks in the Norman style with thick uh, cylinder, cylindrical posts and round arches with dog tooth molding, uh, like a Durham Cathedral in the Romanesque style. And then the uh, short springer poles and the spandrels, uh, and then the uh, ribs uh, springing from the vaults, the, uh, from the uh, spandrels to, to the vault. The vault is a uh, Lincoln style, a uh, Tierceron vault, with the tierceron's and the ridge pole on the bosses and the tierceron springing from the corbels, so that was added later to the uh, elevation designed by the Benedictine monks. Uh, you can see the faces uh, <clears throat> at the corbels at the bottom of the springer poles and the spandrels. The uh, proportions are inconsistent, uh, and the architecture varies as it was designed by the monks. Uh, so the vault uh, sort of evens out the variations in the uh, elevation. There's a detail of the uh, springer poles with the faces and the spandrels. Uh, the uh, dog tooth molding in the arches. So there's a short triforium with uh, pairs of columns supporting round arches and then dog tooth molding in the arches and then the clear story. Uh, windows above and then the severies between the ribs and the vault covered with the white plaster and the Lincoln style from the Gothic period. There's a vault in the aisle of the nave at Gloucester with the really uh, thick ribs uh, crossing the vault in each bay forming a quadripartite vault or uh, each bay divided into four sections <clears throat> and then the uh, severies painted with a white plaster in the Middle Ages, they would have been exposed brick. Uh, so that's the nave from 1220 to 1239. Uh, then you have a second phase, uh, which is the transept and crossing in the 14th and 15th century, uh, which was uh, created following the murder of uh, Edward II, which happened uh, nearby. The architect of the crossing is Robert Tully. Uh, so in the uh, transept, uh, you have some very unusual architecture, very mannerist architecture in the uh, decorated period of English Gothic architecture. <clears throat> Down below, you have a, a curious detail where the buttresses of, of the uh, church of the nave are incorporated into the elevation uh, in the uh, transept off to the side of the nave. So there's a, uh, a piece of the buttress going uh, right uh, through the door into the uh, chapel. So that's uh, interesting how they didn't try to hide the uh, structural buttress in the uh, ornamental architecture. Uh, and then you have a perpendicular style window. Uh, up above you have a, uh, a net vault Oh, a variation of the Tierceron vault or the Liern vault uh, forming a sort of diamond patterns. Uh, and then you have that uh, uh, four centered arch, that really flat arch, just sort of hanging from the uh, arch uh, into the crossing there. 
it doesn't really look like it would do much of anything. So there's the uh, Lierne vault and the transept, uh, the four centered arches and the crossing, which are just hanging from uh, pendants, really uh, kind of a mannerist approach, reversing the uh, structural logic of the architecture. Uh, a lot of the buttresses going through the walls and the four centered arches hanging from pendants uh, defy really any kind of uh, structural logic, which uh, you find a lot in this period in English Gothic architecture. Then in the choir, there's an elaborate uh, net vault formed from the Lierns and the Tierrasurans, the ridge poles, and the bosses uh, all derive from uh, uh, the architecture of Lincoln Cathedral and the vocabulary introduced there. Uh, and then the final phase of Gloucester Cathedral is the cloister, the famous cloister designed by Thomas of Cambridge, 1351 to uh, 64, uh, where you see the uh, introduction of uh, hand walls in late uh, English Gothic style architecture. This is uh, the first construction of the fan vault uh, was believed to have been destroyed, so this is the first existing construction of the uh, fan vault by Thomas of uh, Cambridge, which uh, covers the aisles of the cloister. Uh, uh, the fan, and this is uh, the uh, part of uh, Gloucester Cathedral that uh, was uh, the setting for scenes from the uh, Harry Potter's movies. Uh, so the fan vault uh, appears to be a uh, development uh, from the uh, vocabulary introduced at Lincoln Cathedral. So you have the springer poles in the elevations, uh, and then you have the ribs springing from the springer pole, and the ribs uh, spring into the vault, forming a kind of a cone shape, like at Lincoln, the tiers are on ribs. Uh, but then the uh, uh, the ribs are connected by a severy, which creates a smooth uh, surface of a conoid shape. Uh, and then the uh, severies on the vault are uh, 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 connected with each other between the fan vaults. So you have a kind of a smooth undulating surface uh, produced from this uh, uh, these conoid bundles of tiercerons that are springing from the corbels. The, the ridge pole is removed but it's suggested by the uh, connected uh, quatrefoils in the severies uh, between the fans. Uh, so you, you end up with this kind of undulating surface equivalent to what you would call an epigenetic landscape in bioconstructivism. It's something that Robert Grostes described in his cosmologies in medieval England, like dunes and waves and clouds and how they're formed in nature. So that appears to be what's being formed here in this uh, fan vault, a late development of English Gothic architecture. Uh, the, uh, the, the severies, the surfaces of the vault uh, between the ribs are filled with uh, tracery, uh, which includes cusping, uh, which is uh, introduced to give it a kind of organic look, a kind of a, a thorn sticking out called cusping. And then uh, quatrefoils are also uh, carved into the uh, severies between the ribs. So you have an elaborate uh, carved uh, ornamental surface along with the smooth undulating surface created by the uh, severies uh, connecting the ribs together. And then the elaborate tracery of the quatrefoils in the center of the vault. So this became a, a popular device at the end of the English Gothic architecture period. Uh, it uh, has one further development, the pendant vault, which we'll see in variations uh, at Oxford, for example, in the Divinity School and the, uh, the King's College. This is the facade of uh, Southall Minster. It's spelled Southwell, but it's pronounced Southall. Uh, from, uh, uh, we're, we'll look at the chapter house from 1290. This is the facade. It's about a half hour south of Lincoln. In Lincolnshire, it was a, a Norman uh, church uh, established by the Archbishop Thomas of York. Uh, this was, uh, uh, it's not a uh, cathedral, uh, it's a minster. The cathedral is York Cathedral. This was in the York Diocese, so Thomas of York, and then the bishop was uh, Walter de Grey. It's in the Nottinghamshire. It's a Norman style uh, building. Uh, with a, a Norman elevations in the nave, uh, 
thick round columns and arches, dog tooth molding, just like at Durham, uh, just a wooden ceiling, a round arch uh, separating the nave from the crossing with a more modern style uh, crossing screen there. It's a beautiful old Norman uh, Romanesque style uh, church. The Norman is usually the name applied to Romanesque architecture in England uh, in reference to the Norman invasion of William the Conqueror in the Battle of Hastings in 1099 bringing the French style into England. The uh, choir of uh, Solo Minster is a Lincoln style choir with uh, ogival arches in the arcade with multiple archivolts on bundle columns, a high clear story window, uh, clear story level, no, uh, with three lancets per bay, no triforium, and then short springer poles that begin at corbels and the spandrels uh, and the corbels in the uh, clear story, and then, and then the uh, tier serons uh, spring from the corbels, producing a tier seron vault like at Lincoln with the ridge pole and the bosses. There's the uh, screen uh, in front of the crossing in the later decorated style with lots of crockets and finials, just like in France, OG arches and ogival arches. Uh, Subtle is best known for its chapter house from uh, 1290. Uh, the uh, vault in the it's a wooden uh, vault in the ceiling with brick severies, uh, looking like a giant uh, snowflake with the tier serons and the liernes in a centralized pattern with the large foliate uh, bosses at the uh, joints uh, in the ribs. Uh, and then down below the vault <coughs> in the uh, subtle uh, chapter house are uh, the uh, choir uh, pews uh, for the uh, 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 members of the clergy at Subtle to gather in the chapter house for meetings. They each sit in one of those chairs there uh, in between the columns uh, with the uh, elaborate uh, arches above the columns, the uh, trefoils with the ogival arch, and then above that a triangular pediment with the uh, crockets on top of it in the form of sort of the burning bushes. And then there's uh, faces and uh, foliate designs inserted uh, at the bottom of the uh, spandrels between the arches. It's a kind of, uh, there's a kind of encyclopedic uh, representation of uh, hundreds of different plant types here. So similar to the meal fleur design in the tapestries in France, a kind of encyclopedia of plant types. And then there's a, a celebration of the what are called the pagan green men uh, that uh, we saw in the uh, lodge book of Bilard de Unicor, uh, the leaves with the faces on it uh, from pagan mythology, celebrating a kind of a anthropomorphic uh, element of nature, uh, synthesizing nature and uh, the human uh, mind. And there's some of the uh, uh, different types of leaves on display. Uh, the, the burning crockets up above on the pediments, uh, symbolizing the uh, inflamed heart. Uh, all of this was uh, celebrated in a book by the architecture historian Nicolas Pevsner called The Leaves of uh, Subtle. <clears throat> Very uh, beautiful, uh, sculpted, uh, sculpted in this uh, soft uh, limestone, cane stone. Uh, this beautiful uh, animated uh, organic uh, kind of architecture. Uh, this is Bristol Cathedral, also known as St. Augustine's Abbey uh, in Bristol. Uh, it was originally founded by uh, Robert Fitzharding. Uh, it's on a close there. Uh, the facade is a 19th century facade. It's from 1888. It's by George Edmund Street uh, in the Gothic style. It looks more like a French Gothic cathedral than an English Gothic cathedral. Uh, the cloister at Bristol is uh, the oldest surviving cloister in an English cathedral. It's a, a Norman cloister. It features uh, round arches, intersecting round arches, as could be found in an Islamic mosque. And then the uh, diagonal reticulation uh, up above uh, that could be found in Lincoln Cathedral, for example, related to the geometries of Robert Gross tests later on. So 
another detail of the uh, uh, colonnade and the reticulation above the spiral columns in the colonnade are a reference to the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem, the original structure of uh, Christianity. Uh, the nave at Bristol Cathedral uh, has a high central aisle and high side aisles that are at the same height, making it what's called a hall church. The original uh, architect of the cathedral is William the Geometer in the, in the Norman period. His name can be found, uh, signed in the stone. Uh, the architect of the Gothic period is Robert Fitzharding. Uh, so you have uh, bundle columns uh, with uh, uh, crockets in the uh, capitals up there. Uh, and then you have the uh, Lincoln style uh, tier surround vaults uh, springing from the columns in the nave. And then the choir beyond there, a uh, variation of the Lincoln style vault with the Lierns in the center. So there's the uh, Lincoln style tier surround vault uh, in the nave of Bristol Cathedral. Uh, with the ridge pole, the foliate bosses, the tier surrounds at each bay, and the lierns in between the bays, just like a Lincoln. And you can see the uh, height of the aisles is the same as the height of the nave. There's the tier surround vault in the nave at uh, Bristol with the exposed brick severies. They haven't been painted over with the white plaster. There's another view of the tier surround vault at Bristol. There's uh, one of the side aisles. Uh, the part of the hall church with the full height side aisles and then these uh, uh, elaborate sort of flying uh, rib structures uh, in the aisles uh, in excess of any structural requirement so a kind of a handwriting for a catechism probably for the cosmology understood at the time with the pointed ogival arches and the choir uh, you have a uh, a variation of the Tiersaron vault, uh, a later version where the ridge pole is removed and replaced by Lierne diamonds running down the center. There's cusping inside the diamonds, giving it a kind of organic quality, <clears throat> and then bosses on the joints uh, between the Tiersarons and Lierns in each of the bays, and then the white plaster and the severies. There's the uh, uh, vaulting in the side aisles again and then uh, back in the back of the cathedral this is in the Barclay uh, Chapel this is a uh, vault designed by William Joy the architect of Wells Cathedral and Exeter Cathedral uh, where he creates a kind of a space frame where he uh, completely separates the structure of the rib vault uh, from the surface above and the severy so the vault is just uh, uh, set out in space there as a separate structure on its own, something that could be seen in the architecture of Canterbury and the aisles of the choir, for example, something that reappears throughout English Gothic architecture. Then you have the huge uh, foliate gilded bosses uh, along the ridge pole covering up the joinery. Probably They're probably there because the joinery wasn't very good. English uh, masonry isn't very good, um, especially compared to French masonry. Things tend to be crooked in England. Yeah, there's me visiting the cathedral a few years ago. Uh, I was going to a conference. That's a friend of mine, uh, Valerie Reese, one of the world's leading scholars on Marsilio Ficino, the Renaissance philosopher. Uh, there's a nice uh, a cafeteria in the back of the cathedral. You can eat at a table outside, uh, right in the cemetery <laughs> of the cathedral. Uh, there's the train station in Bristol. I've been to Bristol, Bristol several times. I've always been fascinated by Bristol since I lived in uh, Bristol, Rhode Island for 18 years while teaching at Roger Williams. Uh, Bristol, England is much different from Bristol, Rhode Island. It, it was the largest uh, port city in medieval England. It's a bus bustling industrial uh, port city. It's kind of dirty, uh, noisy and crowded, uh, nothing like the quiet and peaceful uh, Bristol in Rhode Island. There's a, it's a canal city with the canals uh, coming in from the sea for the ports. There's a sort of a, a gentrified uh, section of Bristol on the left there where 
the old uh, uh, dock buildings are now filled with cafes, and I, there was an internet cafe in that building there that I, I made use of. And then I stayed at a hotel, the uh, Ibis Hotel, just on the left there. It's a hotel chain in Europe, not a very good one. I would, wouldn't recommend it. There's a kind of mirrored ball in the center. This is all part of the regentrified dock area at Bristol. Uh, you can see your reflection in the ball. So there's me taking a picture of the ball on the way to the conference. There's the uh, Ibis Hotel, nice modern building, but rooms are kind of uncomfortable. Uh, there's the cathedral up on the hill back in the left there. Then right across from the hotel is a Hooters. Uh, I'd never seen a Hooters in England before. I was kind of surprised to see something like that in England. I didn't actually eat there, but it was right there across from the hotel. Uh, and then you uh, walk up the uh, hill in Bristol to the university. In that huge neo-Gothic tower there is the uh, entrance to the university. There was a, a movie I liked called Starter 21 in England that was supposed to be set at Bristol University, but I discovered uh, that uh, it was actually uh, filmed somewhere else. There's the uh, interior of the uh, neo-Gothic tower at the university with the fan vaults just like the fan vaults in the Gloucester uh, cloister from the actual Middle Ages. There's uh, Valerie uh, presenting a, a paper at the uh, conference at the University of Bristol. Uh, so finally in this section is Tewkesbury Abbey, a beautiful abbey in Western England. It's a, a Norman style building. It was founded by Robert Fitz Hammond, who was the uh, cousin of uh, William the Conqueror. It's in Glou Gloucestershire, not far from Gloucester. So it has a square Norman tower. This is just after the uh, Norman invasion of 1066. It was originally founded. So it has a Norman Romanesque nave with the thick cylindrical columns, a uh, simple brick nave. And then it has a, uh, a vault added to it in the Gothic period, which is a development of the Lincoln style vault it has three ridge pole and thick ribs, tiercerons and liernes, forming a pattern in the vault and the joinery covered with the foliate bosses. And it has a uh, decorated style uh, vault pattern in the crossing and also in the choir further beyond there. So there's the uh, vault at Tewkesbury Abbey, which is a development of the uh, Lincoln style vault. Uh, with the thick ribs, the three ridge pole, uh, symbolizing the Trinity, uh, and the bosses on the intersections, the tier surrounds rising, rising from the corbels, just like in the vaults at Lincoln, and the clear story level tucked in uh, behind the vault, way up on top there. Then in the choir, uh, you have a uh, interesting development of the Lierne vault, with all kinds of uh, curved, curved Lierne's and cusping, uh, and gilded bosses and the, the red, white, and blue for the Trinity. It ends up looking like a uh, psychedelic cover of a Beatles album or something uh, back in the Middle Ages. So a very interesting development of the Lincoln vocabulary in the vaulting in the, the later Gothic period at Tewkesbury Abbey. You have an interesting vault in the crossing. It's a, it, it's, it looks like a mandala with the sun at the center. And then the planets orbiting around the sun. And then the tiercerons and liernes are arranged in uh, concentric squares, uh, forming uh, what is intended to be a mandala. So it's uh, showing the uh, influence of uh, Eastern religion and Buddhism uh, in England in the late Gothic period, around uh, 1320 in the 14th century. Uh, the sun in the center is a symbol of the King of England. And the, the uh, planets are symbols of his uh, court. Uh, and the, then just like uh, with a mandala, it's designed to be a microcosm of the uh, social order and the, uh, the hierarchy of the cosmos. There are also uh, chantry chapels at Tewkesbury Abbey dedicated to prominent families in that part of England. <coughs> <clears throat> the Beauchamp family and the Dispenser families. 
The Chantry Chapel is a uh, freestanding uh, chapel separate from the architecture of the church. So it's in the nave of the church. It's just a, a little room, a uh, freestanding uh, room. Uh, and here uh, you have uh, a uh, late uh, decorated style of English Gothic architecture with uh, fan vaults and the very first appearance of the uh, pendants and the pen, uh, pendant vault. Uh, so you see the you have the tiercerons up above the development of the Lincoln vocabulary uh, forming the fans and then you have the upside down fans coming down from the ceiling forming the pendants uh, with a so it would be you would expect there to be a, a, a sprayer pole or a corbel or a column or something underneath the pendant there but they they're just get they just get cut off and so the pendants are just suspended so from the ceiling there. So it's sort of, it, it contradicts any structural uh, rationale in the architecture. It's for the purposes of creating a handwriting in excess of the structural requirements of the architecture. So you'd have to assume that the uh, purpose is to uh, allow the architecture to be, uh, to be a catechism for the uh, cosmology uh, of the Middle Ages, the uh, creation of matter from light through geometrical patterns and the emanation of multiplicity from singularity as found in the uh, treatises by Robert Gross Test at Lincoln. So these uh, vocabulary elements that are introduced at Lincoln uh, continue to uh, develop uh, beginning here at Tewksbury and then we'll see further examples uh, in the next section at uh, Ely and then at the Divinity School and Christ Church at Oxford and then at Bath Abbey uh, by the Vertu brothers. There's one of the Chantry chapels at Tewksbury showing a, a regular fan vault with uh, elaborate uh, carvings and the spandrel there between the uh, ribs uh, with the quatrefoils and then the perpendicular style uh, tracery uh, in the elevation there with the uh, OG arches and the oak eyeball arches carved into the tracery. So that concludes uh, the section English Gothic 2. So one more section on English Gothic architecture uh, and it titled uh, English Gothic 3 is the next lecture.